Welcome to Lunch Session. We have the beginning of every one of these Haycasts. Uh, you know what? Episodes are building up like the dust on my printer. So, this is our one year anniversary, or 52, well, technically 53, but 52nd episode. And I want to thank everybody for following along the Haycast this year. You guys are amazing. And as always, subscribe to let us know that you are, in fact, in love with the episodes as much as we are in love with your support. So, <clears throat> with that being said, this weekend, over at www.castandpain.com, we have Genius, our nootropic supplement uh, that was actually formulated by Jamie Lewis, the guy I'm having in this hate cast with me today. Um, that is on BOGO. Buy one Genius, get another one absolutely free as well as having one of probably the greatest protein sales we've ever had so if you have not tried any uh, flavor of Kraken go ahead and do so now you can always stack that with the 25% off code which will always like always be in the description box below but uh, with all of that information at your fingertips let me tell you what you're about to listen to. So you guys are in for a little bit of a treat. So as you know, Jamie has switched from chasmpain.blogspot.com to a uh, better platform for him specifically with his needs and has a new blog. The blog, of course, is Plague of Strength. So we do a little bit of a article wrap-up or review or this... A little catch up with what he's been writing about. Uh, we go over some of the Baddest Mofo articles that he's done. Uh, we go over some of the new writing on his site by uh, his significant other, Tara. And uh, we go over a bit more. It kind of ends on a weird note, but it always does take a weird turn when, it, for, for whatever reason, we ended up talking about fetishes and lemon stealing whores and. Yeah, it's worth a listen. So, if you're wanting to kill an hour, this is the place to be. If you're not, we still love you. Watch the show, play on the background, put it mute, whatever. Without further ado, enjoy this anniversary episode of The Hatecast. Thanks for supporting. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Welcome to the Hatecast. I am doing a very fast recording today. Um, I'm joined by Jamie Lewis, as you can tell, for the year episode. So, yo, yo. Welcome back. Uh, first and foremost, if you hear buzzing in Jamie's mic, um, that is because the incels are plotting against us. <laughs> uh, they will find my family. They will kill us. But first, they have to get laid. Um, yeah. But I did want to discuss something with you. So you have quite a few articles that I would like to discuss over at Plague of Strength. Okay. So first and foremost, what is this Berserkers versus Zen Monk series that you have going on? That was a, an article series that I started up. I, like I think a better part of a year ago, and it was because back in the day, um, like I used to read Iron Man magazine and stuff, and uh, yeah. they would always they were always really big on uh, like being very zen while you train, training in pure silence. Like I even remember articles about training with with yourself blindfolded and shit like that. Um, yeah. But but I always tended more towards the lunatic side, the Benny Poto side, where you just go fucking nuts, and that's just how I like to train. And so um, I decided to look and see what the various benefits are for each one of them, and then uh, kind of incorporated all kinds of weird, like, uh, like berserker mindset uh, training techniques that you can use in order to, uh, like... Basically, you just are making yourself more aggressive and, like, getting a testosterone dump. 
Um, okay. And then the other side of it for the people who are more chill, or if you're prone to any kind of anxiety, uh, training like a maniac like really just exacerbates that. So, um, and there's there's plenty of science to support that, but I used both science and anecdotal evidence, and um, kind of went over like different meditation te- techniques and shit like that. Even though I'm not a person who ever has been able to meditate, but I, I at least gave the information. Yeah, and see that's what I like about your writing is because you're one of the only people in the fitness industry, strength sector, whatever you want to call it, that play devil's advocate against your opinion. Um, yeah, well, well, I really try to be journalistic about it. I'm, I mean, I, I know that the website started on Blogspot, but I never really considered it to be a blog. I always treated it like um, like I was writing articles for a newspaper or something. Yeah. Or for a magazine. And um, so I think, I think that's where it comes from, is that I'm not just giving my opinion. I'm giving... All different opinions. You think you would ever be interested in uh, developing a uh, physical and uh, email version of Plague of Strength blogs? As you know, like create your own magazine. Um, like an electronic magazine kind of thing. Well, that and with the option of of buying a physical copy, like limited edition copies, so that you could print like a hundred of them, and when the hundred's gone. It's gone, so get your plague of strength on. That's an interesting concept. Uh, given the fact that every bodybuilding magazine has either going out of business or has already gone out of business, I don't know how how much of a like money earning proposition that would be. Um, but I mean, it's something to explore, certainly. Well, it, you heard it here, guys. Uh, he's willing to take a look at it. So if you would like to berate him in the comments and get him to do it. Uh, you know, that's, that's something entirely possible. So, so Berserker, okay, here, here's my opinion on that, because I've never been the type to meditate either. I've always used anger, well, not necessarily anger, well, yeah, look, I, honestly, I, I do have, I'm, I'm hot-headed, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very short-tempered when it comes to certain things, and, um, See, I've you always... strike me as a very level-headed guy. That's on camera. Trust me. <laughs> All right. No, I'm a fucking maniac. Um, like, uh, no, I had I had a lot of issues growing up, and like I was like fight the power there for a bit. I mean, I, I didn't go uh, I didn't go full like uh, juggalo like some people that I know, but like I I fucking I was a fucking rager when I was a when I was a kid. But. Um, yeah, I've, I've I never... I don't know that I would characterize Juggalos as a particularly aggressive bunch either. Listen, listen, okay? This might be a side tangent we'll, we'll go into in a minute, but did you see... Do you watch Z Nation? Yes. Did you see the Juggalo episode? No, that one I didn't. I, I stopped watching Z Nation like two years ago, but I, I have watched it. Okay. It so... just started to get too campy and fucking... Sure. Yeah. The premise didn't make any sense anymore. I mean, it, like the guy who's half zombie or whatever, and I was just like, what the fuck are we doing here? Yeah. Come on. I, but I mean, at least, unlike The Walking Dead, there's actually fucking zombies in it. So Let me rephrase that. Do you think the Insane Clown Posse is at any point banking off of the fact that they think that Juggalos are maniacs? Because... Like, I had my own theories where, it, like, there's there's a bunch of TV shows and episodes related to, like, uh, this this group of Juggalos, right? Because, for whatever yeah, even work- reason... even Workaholics had a Juggalo episode. Yeah, for whatever reason, they keep being relevant. Um, so, like, uh, Juggalos keep being relevant. So, I'm thinking that, like, somebody from the Insane Clown Posse is sitting there pushing for this on shows... And it's like, you can pay us money if you want to play one of our songs. Like, that'd be cool. <laughs> I, you know, they those guys um, are actually extremely shrewd businessmen. And yeah. uh, they've managed to leverage really taking, like, the new metal angst of, like, 90s music and turning yeah. it into a rap thing. And then they're also wrestlers now. So um, 
they're real big into backyard wrestling. But if you know anything about wrestlers, uh, wrestlers are basically drama club club nerds that like lifting weights. They're not like right. yeah, there are some guys out there who are genuine fucking lunatics. But that whole '80s style like maniac like pro wrestler thing that isn't a thing anymore. Yeah. Now they're just they're very sensitive people. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, but it, but at the same time, like that ties back in because you know I grew up with all that stuff. I grew up with you know uh, wrestling and it's like little rebirth heyday, right? Uh, mm-hmm. The nineties and early two thousands. Plus, I grew up with uh, me- just the most insane. Like when I was a kid, and uh, Lincoln Park hit the scene, Slipknot hit the scene, uh, Disturbed really started to pop off, right? Um, because they were actually a band, I think, like, way back. They had one, I could be mistaken, but I think they had, like, one uh, album in the 80s that they were a different band entirely. But you Insane um, Clown Posse? Disturbed. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I kind of grew up in that um, new metal era. So, like, the whole anger, using anger as fuel, has always been something that I've just done, you know? Um, and I, I, I translate that into my lifting. Like, I don't sit there and I'm not sitting there like, you have to be calm, everything like that. Like, I'll be honest with everybody. I like to slam weights around. There is nothing more satisfying than decelerating your deadlift with such intense speed that it shakes the very ground you're standing on. Yeah. When I, um, the meet where I tore my bicep. I actually broke my hand on my first pull because oh, I pulled shit. 606 so fast that, like, I just flipped out. And uh, also I had uh, accidentally taken, like, an absolutely near lethal amount of Anadrol. So I was actually bleeding through my pores because my blood pressure was so high. But, accidental. Um, but, no, it really was. <laughs> I didn't I, – I didn't – this guy gave me a bottle of liquid Anadrol, and he was like – all right, so just sip on this throughout the next 24 hours. And I was like, all right. So when somebody hands you a bottle of something and tells you to sip it over the course of 24 hours, to me, the assumption is, so I should pace this so I should finish the bottle in 24 hours. Right, right. Yeah. Logical which was like <laughs> Which was like two grams of, of Anadrol. Oh, but, um, Jesus. Yes. So, um, so I pulled 606 so fast... And then I was so fired up that you actually can see it. Like, the, I, I slam it down with such force. Like, I didn't drop it. Like, I had it under control. But I slammed it into the ground so hard that the weights actually whipped up towards my upper body. That's how hard I pushed it to the ground. Yeah. And uh, so I broke my left hand in, in Jesus. that. Jesus. Yeah. I never did have that fixed either. So it, it doesn't really bother me too much anymore, but... I've had a bone, like, that you can feel sticking up in my palm ever since. That is something I will probably... I'm not that hardcore, man. But I will say (laughs) this. um, You know, when it comes to everybody at the top end, I think, right now in strength sports, you don't see many people with that calm demeanor. Is that just me, or... Like, do you know any examples of people that are just really, really calm when they start lifting? And, uh, like, when they're going for max efforts and stuff? Um, there are definitely people that I've seen at the top end who look genuinely bored while they're lifting. Okay. I don't know that I would call it calm, but bored. Yeah. And, and that's always uh, that's always struck me as weird. But there was a guy, Doug Furness, I wrote about him in the article. Um, his nickname was the Iceman. He was fucking huge. Like, uh... Just jacked his shit, uh, lifted 275, I think, 242 and 275, and, uh, yeah. like, ripped to shreds, just like he had that 80s power lifter bodybuilder look, right. and uh, he apparently never made a fucking face while lifting, never caught a face once. He was just super chill. You know, I, I've, I've seen it a little bit, but I haven't really seen anybody at the top end, like, right now, because... What people don't realize is str- the strength standards now, just because of how insane the numbers are, you kind of have to be a maniac to do it. Yeah. You know? 
it's genuinely dangerous, like especially uh, squatting. Um, yeah. Like when I the I walked out six seventy five and six eighty five a couple of times and squatted it. I think I did six seventy five for a double, and uh, I wasn't wearing a belt, nothing. And uh, I remember racking it and being like, Jesus Christ! I didn't even set up the pins. I could have died because <laughs> I never had a spotter, like nothing. If I had, like, tripped or, you know, like, sometimes you can kind of shuffle a step back and your shoe gets caught on the ground, like, yeah. I, I genuinely could have died. And I was like, huh, well, there you go. See, many times I've been in the same boat, too, because uh, I also I, – I, do you train alone? Yeah. Okay, because I'm, I'm the same way. I just found and that – while I do not advocate this at all, uh, I always train with a monkey grip on bench press, never have a spotter. Right, right. Well, there, there's. I don't, know, a, I don't. What do they call monkey grip now? You know what I'm talking about. Thumbless grip. Uh, suicide grip is what they call. Suicide it. Suicide grip. Yeah. That's that's yeah. what the cool kids are calling it these days. Um, I I use suicide grip. I switch between the two just because suicide grip for me feels different. It, it's it, very very different. It feels better on my wrists. Well, not only that, but I feel like almost you get, and this may be bro science, but what the fuck ever. For myself, I get a better contraction when I use suicide grip. Ah, see, I I gave up thinking about contractions so long ago that I like. <laughs> I'm just thinking about like moving the weight. I mean, I do like quote unquote feel the movements and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, like Mel will occasionally be like, "Where am I supposed to be feeling this?" And I'm like, "How oh, the fuck would I know?" Like, I guess your ass, because that's what it's working. Yeah. But yeah, she'd be no, like, "Well, I... am I supposed to feel it here?" And I'm like, "I don't know. Just move the weight." Well, see, that's that's a uh, you know because bodybuilding is a little bit different. You you ha you do have to concentrate on the squeeze a little bit just because of volume and stuff. But it, I I had that I had a problem where I just wasn't concentrating on the squeeze at all. I got really really fucking strong, but I also um, didn't gain probably as much mass as I could. Right, but that's the that's the what if we always have in our training that what if I did this differently? What if I did that? You know. Yeah, but uh, I did have one question because somebody uh, mentioned this in a previous Haycast. Um, would you, and this might be an off tangent, but since we're on the topic of strength, um, would you have ever bulked harder during your competitive years? Like, would you have done th what? Would you have done differently during when you were competing? Um. Well, I never. One of the reasons why I never bulked hard was because I never, my like my strength will go up when I gain weight, obviously, but it doesn't go up in proportion to the amount of weight I've gained. Right. Does that make sense? Uh, my like my training weights don't don't increase that drastically enough to jump to justify jumping up at twenty pounds. So, okay. um, so I couldn't because one eighty one was kind of my sweet spot for uh, for like competition and uh, and I mean there were the two meets that I tried to get down to 165 and uh, missed weight both times but yeah, well, that seems um, that seems way too light for you though with your frame that seems way too light dude my my frame is actually very very small I, I wrestled 134 in college I'm not a, naturally a big guy no but um, you know I have this I have this theory where um, you know, muscle mass kind of changes your frame over time. Just because, you know, if you have if the absolute lowest that you can get, right? Because, of course, you're going to use water depleting. You're going to use all those other tricks to, to make weight in a powerlifting meet. But um, whenever, you're, whenever you're a significant amount of muscle mass beyond your quote-unquote natty limit, right? Um, I do think that it's almost uh, too much of a stressor to get below a certain weight. Like, everybody's different, of course, but for you to get down to 165, I mean, what the fuck did you have to do? Well, I got walking pneumonia. Oh, well, that... Okay, that's that's one way. <laughs> yeah, I got walking pneumonia, and... Uh, so I've, I've done exactly one CrossFit workout in my life, and this was when I was working for that company, Wattify, that makes... Uh, they make... Uh, like your program tracking software for CrossFit right. so everybody can enter their weights and times and shit like that 
And um, so we did a CrossFit onboarding workout, and I don't remember exactly what it was. It was like you had to run 200 yards, you had to do a bunch of pull-ups, you had to do cleans with like something real light. And I was like, fuck, I could beat this gym record. And, and the guy was like, the person who set the, the record was a Navy SEAL. And I was like, yeah, fuck that, I got that. So yeah. I did it. And uh, but I was uh, like, uh, did you ever play a lot of like sports growing up? Oh hell no, no. I played okay. Madden on the Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what anybody else calls it. But when I uh, do too much like high intensity cardio without having trained for high intensity cardio, right. I get this like sensation that like my lungs are burned. Yeah. And I just call it burning lungs. And like for a couple of days, like you're coughing and you feel like shit. Well, I had I definitely burnt the fuck out of my lungs, and I went to go pick us up wings at the uh, wing spot that was down the street, and the broad who served me the wings, her kid had pneumonia, and so she gave me fucking pneumonia, and Jeez. because I'm because I'm a psychopath and I hate going to the doctor, I just like ignored it and tried to sweat it out and just kept thinking it was gonna go away, and like I had to throw out my mattress because I sweated through it. Um, cause my, my temperature was so high. I was a fucking wreck. I was delirious at work all day long. And so I was trying to train through this, of course, like in between sets going out, out back of the, uh, the back of the gym and coughing so hard, I'd start puking. It was, it, it was not my, not my brightest moment, but in any right. event, after a month of that, I finally went to the doctor cause I was literally passing out at work. And, uh, my boss was like, you need to go get the fuck out of here. Like, you're going to kill us all, like, whatever disease you got. And so uh, so I went to the doctor, and I was like, yeah, I, you know, starting to feel a little better. And they were like, you have a 104-degree temperature. Like, this is you feeling better? And I was like, oh, yeah. Like, at night, I sweat so bad, I, like, I, like, I had to throw out all my sheets. Like, uh, I'm not even sweating right now. And they were like, you need to go to the hospital. This is where you need to go. So... Like, they gave me fluids and shit, but then I had lost so much weight that I, uh, I figured, what the fuck, I'll try, I'll try making 165. And both times I competed at 165, I, uh, I would have destroyed the records, but I just, I couldn't right. make the last two pounds. So two pounds away, uh, you had already, like, water depleted and all that stuff, right? Yeah, and the problem Jeez. was, both times, was that... Um, the girl I was dating couldn't drive stick, and at the time there was no Uber or anything like that. So I, I feel no... a sexual innuendo coming on. No, no, no. <laughs> I uh, she couldn't she couldn't get me from the gym to the way in. Gotcha, gotcha. So like, because I was like couldn't drive. I was uh, like I was I was passing out at the wheel, and I was like, yeah. "We're gonna die if I try to make this next two pounds." Just trying to get to the way in. So I just said, "Fuck it." Yeah, but uh, somebody had mentioned that you had mentioned the fact that you would have gone "quote unquote" grug mode or or gained a bunch of weight, and I didn't think that you were. Um, of course, I don't know because I don't, you know, I, I don't know everything like one hundred percent about you, even though I research. But um, I didn't think you'd want to live as a walking keg, so. You know, I'm I'm really not all that concerned with uh with being super lean now. I, I like eating pizza, and I like fucking having hoagies, and so Yeah. I've been lean, I've done that whole thing, and now, like, I'm trying to get leaner again. I'm not particularly fat, but I'm not nearly as lean as I used to be. Right. So I think maybe I would have tried to hit a middle, middle ground. Yeah. But quite frankly, in the time I was competing, I was so fucking hateful, and I had nothing else to do with my life, that training and dieting was the only thing I did. Right. So, it's, and that part of part of that extreme extreme uh, personality is what made you a fantastic powerlifter, really, because you'll see that in a lot of competitors too. Um, but at the same time, like then you have Half Thor, which, by the way, he he deadlifted the most ever on the elephant bar recently. Did you see that? Oh, did did they have the Arnold? I. No, he did it in a in a gym, but I mean, oh, okay, because the um, the record breakers thing that Rogue is doing, it's going to be, like they're giving fifty thousand dollars to the first person who pulls, what is it, uh, 
500. 500 kgs. Jesus Christ. What did he just pull? Was it was it the 1074 that I saw him pull? Where it was um, just like, it was the easiest thing you ever saw anybody do? He just stood up at the bar? Oh, no. No. Although that is something that Half Thor would do. Yeah. Um... But no, I just, uh, I, I don't know the way to use, but I just saw the clickbait title, so of course I had to mention oh. it in this yeah, well, I freaking think that's video. The one. And he, dude, watch that video. He, I mean, he doesn't pull it like it's nothing, but yeah. I mean, I have seen a lot of people pull 500 pounds slower than he pulls 1,000. Yeah. What do you think he can attribute that uh, to, except for, I mean, you know, of course, the extra special sports supplements that he's using, but, but I mean, what what do you think his training uh, looks like on an average given day? Because, you know, did you ever get involved with the strongman stuff? No, um, I mean, I did. I, I trained with the log, and I trained. Uh, I did some of the movements because right. when I trained at um, when I trained at Iron Sport back in the day, there was um, there were some like top level strongmen. There, they were like the uh, 231 pound weight class, so I okay. just work in with them at like just moving weight and like doing axle bar cleans and shit like that, and yeah. I couldn't I couldn't get the uh, I couldn't get the same weights they they could not because I wasn't strong enough but because you need one a belt and two a bit of a gut in order to like sit the bar on your stomach. Oh yeah yeah yeah. And um, at the time there was no, I think they had just had the under 200 pound. Um, class like had just come in, but like now that they got these like who the fuck even knows like 135 pound like little little people running around like trying to pick up stones. Who the fuck yeah. wants to watch that? It's like watching the the little tiny uh, Mexican boxers fight. It's like who yeah. fucking cares? Like I could yeah, walk no. in there with a with a with a tennis ball and a sock and beat them both to death. Something like, that I have at the same time. Something that I have noticed with the strongman game is a lot of them are making social media posts about them getting leaner, right? And I think, no, you know, people think that it's a performance thing, but I, I really do think that it's like a, a more like move towards going mainstream, you know, because you want to, you want to, whenever you're the ambassador or you're the, uh, you know, uh, ambassador to a certain sport or event. You want to make sure that you know people, uh, the people that are imitating you are, are somewhat healthy, you know, in a, in a healthy way. Just like why all these stars say, "No, I don't, I don't, I don't do this or I don't do that," blah blah blah, and then like they do it behind the scenes, right? So if you'll notice, most of the powerlifter or uh, I'm sorry, strongman competitors right now are working on quote unquote getting lean, just like Eddie Hall having abs for the first time ever since I've seen him compete. He has abs. Jesus. Yeah, he he cut down quite a quite a bit, and I think it was just due to the fact that um, you know, partly because they realize that getting leaner can can help performance, but at the same time, it's it's you know being an ambassador of the sport, it's it's showing every, the world that you know this can be healthy too. Like, get I don't think it has anything lifting. to do with being healthy. I think it's just they want to they want to look good on Instagram. Well, yeah, of course, like no no doubt. But and then you see them at their uh, competition, right? And they've gained all their weight back, and it's like, oh, there, there, there's a reason these guys are monsters. I mean, Brian Shaw's weighing in at 450 pounds now. Jesus. Um, yeah, and there's this video of him getting inside of a mini coop. It's pretty funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's running in at 450 pounds. I don't know what Half Thor is. I think Half Thor is the most aesthetically pleasing strongman we have. So. Like top um, tier strong man. Well, I mean, Derek Poundstone was always ripped. Marius Pujanowski was fucking shredded. Well, I'm talking about current. Oh know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. I, like I'm just thinking back. Like most of the top top guys have yeah. have been lean in the past. Even when you go back to the '90s with like Curtis Leffler and Manfred Hurlburt and stuff like that. Like you still had like bodybuilder esque strong men. Yeah. So yeah. But I'm just, uh, I'm just still amazed by the amount of weight they can lift compared to their body weight because Wilkes doesn't have shit on them. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, you know, yeah. what, while we're sort of on the subject, 
Um, one of the things that makes me want to just wrap my hands around the world's neck and wring it is yeah. reading comments on anything having to do with Callum Von Moger. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about a guy who's fucking shredded all the time, too. Like, apparently all he did for the last, like, year or two was drink. And, like, he just started training again. He's a month into it, and he's already looking fucking crazy. But then well, yeah, you get all I these mean... all these little pussies on the internet talking mad shit about him. And it's like, you guys, like, literally couldn't even pick up his gym bag. And you look like shit, and you're talking shit on this guy. Well, you know, the reason why he was... Uh, the reason why he's so uh, frowned upon right now is because he had basically everything to get into, like... I mean, he was going to be an open star, you know? I, I don't think he would have stayed in classic physique for too long. I think he would have moved to open, and I think he would have been, you know, an Olympia competitor just like Dallas McCarver would have been. But um, the reason why people don't like him is because he just, he does, like, he's that guy that doesn't really pay too much attention to his diet. And I know that seems like a cop-out, but if you watch some of the documentaries and his, his Instagram stuff... He just doesn't have to try hard. No, nah, he's just ripped. People, it just makes people mad. It really, it really does. Well, you know yeah. what else is hilarious about it? And uh, I've had some of the same comments about me and uh, just like throwing away potential and all that shit. And yeah, I know. I've I, both both he and I have. I mean, we both did fairly similar things. We got injured. We got frustrated. We started drinking too much. But right. by the same token, powerlifting and bodybuilding don't make any fucking money money at all. Like, I've been broke so long I don't even remember what it's like to have money. So, like, really, at the end of the day, like, at, like, at what point do you just say, well, this is fucking stupid? And I think a lot of it has to do, too, with the fact that some competitors just don't enjoy life very much. They're so concentrated on the money that they might potentially make that they end up passing on the cheesecake. Or they end up passing on having a few drinks because they think that it's going to affect their waistline. And that eventually drives people crazy. Yeah, I'll um, tell you this. Dieting super hard for 10 years definitely drove me fucking crazy. <laughs> I, I, like, I'm really, I'm having a hard time buckling down on my diet again. I'll, you know, for like two weeks, I'll be dead solid on keto. And then I'm just like, eh, fuck it, I'm going to eat pizza for the next five days. That kind of brings us into an interesting turn. Uh, there's a new writer on Plague of Strength. And I wanted to kind of mention this, so... Okay. Um, you know, Tara's doing some work. She's, she's yeah. putting out some blog content. So let's talk a little bit about her little day eight on keto thing. She made some pretty fantastic looking baked sausages and everything like that. So so she's hitting it pretty hard now, huh? Yeah, well, she, um, I, she really has a frame for training. Um, she doesn't take a lot of pictures, and neither of us do. Like, neither of us are terribly pleased with our physiques right now, so we're just not, we don't take pictures. But she's actually, like, from a structural standpoint, considerably bigger than me. She's, like, two inches taller than me, and, I mean, she was 200 pounds when she was, like, in high school. And not because she's, like, terrifically fat. She just carries a lot of muscle, weirdly without right. even trying, and um, she's just like, I, I like to joke, she's strong on plow. So, um, <laughs> I think yeah. it, when when she first wanted to start writing, I was like, yeah, well, I guess go ahead, and, because people keep asking, like, oh, well, talk more about your own training, or uh, talk about like what you're eating now, and I hate writing about myself. I do not like it. So, right. she was like, well, why don't I start writing, and that way we have extra content, and uh, and, you know, give the people what they want. And it's been quite polarizing. People have either, people, some people hate it, some people love it. I've seen nothing but positive comments. And, you know, she did that, uh, she actually did a uh, Q&A for you, which I thought was pretty interesting. She wrote about you in a, the most recent one. Yeah, and, uh, there was, Yeah, there was somebody that was lifting with you. How, how'd that go? I, I've, um, I've talked to Dejan, like, he, he was an early follower of the, Chaos and Pain blog, and uh, he lives in Singapore. So, actually, oh, no, okay. I take that back. He lives in, like, Shenzhen, uh, which is also, well, it's China, but uh, right, in any sure. event, yeah, he's, he's a, a black dude who lives in China, and so 
we talk about like boxing. And, oh, he hard, he and I hardly ever talk about lifting. It's just like about music and shit like that. But he's actually from Jersey, and so he messaged me and he was like, "Yo, I'm in town. Like, you want to if you want to hang out?" And I was like, "Fuck yeah, come down and train." So we uh, we trained and we did uh, we did uh, hack deadlifts, which I despise. And uh, all they did, <laughs> it, all they succeeded in doing was like tearing the skin off my hamstrings and bending um, the bar. Yeah. Yep. And then um, then we went <laughs> and uh, sh- shrugged, and he had never shrugged more than three fifteen, I don't think. And I had him work up to 545, oh, and he wrecked. fucking loved it. Like, he just, one, he didn't know how to take the bar off the pins, uh, like, using your legs. I don't know if you know how to do that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not. So Once so you, you know kind of, how to do it, it's not difficult. Exactly. But, it, for, it, like, it just doesn't occur to some people. So, uh Right. So I just kept being like, nah, put more weight on the bar. Nah, put more weight on the bar. And, uh. So it was fun, and then he was freaking out because I was shrugging on eight fifty five or so eight forty five. That, that uh, was in the article, yeah, yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ter, uh, you know, Tara's kind of uh, bragging on you. So ah. it really, it really is a fluff piece. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed it, man. It's 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 kind of cool to see, and you were in your natural element too, man. You were wearing. Uh, basketball shorts like you probably always do and you're fucking yep. <laughs> giving the middle finger to the camera and it's fucking cool to see well, um, nice man i'm glad you liked it thanks for letting me know yeah and and uh you know hopefully we can see more from tara in the future i mean that's that is fucking fantastic you do you two are the power couple i'm, I'm calling <laughs> it right now she uh, she's really been enjoying writing about it, and she's been doing a lot of the back end stuff for uh, Chaos and Pain or for Plague of Strength, which yeah. has really helped me because it's all the shit that actually makes money, but uh, that I have no interest in doing. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I get you, man. And also, um, badass merchandise, by the way, is up available uh, now, right? Yeah, yeah, we've got uh. And we still have two more shirt designs that haven't been printed yet just because we're trying to space them out a little bit. Yeah, but, but I'm uh, talking about these nice gym bags. Oh, my these God, nice dude, I love gym that gym bags. bag. I could not I could not love a human baby as much as I love that gym bag. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was actually thinking about picking one up. So, Man, it's, it's, it's fucking cool. I'm, I'm so glad that, uh, man, you have found a fantastic uh, logo design. And that your site is nice. It has a nice little search function, which people forget that they can use. <laughs> Thank and, you for reminding um, them. Well, I'm just saying, man. You know, because we actually had some messages come into the Cast and Pain Facebook that was basically like, hey, we can't find this thing on Play Your Strength. I'm like, search function. Yeah. Um, you know, but um, let's speak about another one. So you had the baddest, another Baddest Mofo uh, yep. article come out. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's uh, Ted RCD, who was a um, he was the first guy to bench seven hundred in competition. He looks he, like a uh, psychopath, by the way. Oh, he do- he genuinely does, doesn't he? Yeah. And uh, one real cool thing that I found was uh, that nobody else nobody else knows about apparently is that he did a couple of years ago. He did a it was like for his old university. He he did an interview. It was like for a sociology class or something like that. So I got a lot of really good insight into him because uh, it was just in his own words. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but he was a he was a pro wrestler for a while. He just he's done a little of everything. He's acted in a bunch of shit. He's been on uh, Blue Bloods and Law and Order. Uh, he was in the he's- Last Equalizer. Wait a minute. He's been on Blue Bloods. Is he typecast or is he like like an actor now? Serious actor. I, I they're all bit parts, I think. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I want to I want to be uh, an extra on a zombie film. That's what I want. Oh, just to get in like corpse makeup and stuff like that? Yeah. I think it would yeah. be fun. Like that's and that's all acting is is it's a dress up at the end of the day. Dress up and make believe. There you um, go. And then you can get a little bit of your juggalo sensibilities out. Fuck yeah. I, you know what? <laughs> Any producers that is watching, you want to make a Juggalo documentary? I can be an extra in that. There Hell you yeah. go. Hell yeah. I can even talk about how 
I just took some oxy. That's another thing is it, back on the juggalos, man. They they fucking they're crazy about like pushing the whole drug thing with the juggalos and every every show that they're stereotyped. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, they uh and didn't the, didn't ICP come out as like a Christian band a few years ago? I think they tried it. <laughs> I think they tried it. I I mean you know, it kind of hurt them to be labeled as a terrorist organization. I think, <laughs> like, think any time anytime that a group of people gets together and they have, like, they're very, very anti-establishment, even because, again, Juggalos are not a violent bunch, but just they're so anti-authoritarian, I think that, uh, I think that starts making people nervous. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I get that, you know. Uh, something I've noticed about... Um, about your readers and stuff is they're also pretty anti authority uh, authority words. Yep, yeah, you can do so it. So like I can do it. I believe in myself. Uh, but it's, they're it's very It's going to be okay. It'll be fine. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've said that. Now you have to Has say it? in any event. Oh, in any event. See? Now everybody's failed the drinking game. Um <laughs> By the way, if you're playing the Chaos and Pain drinking game, you have to do double shots every shot. So you have to do two shots at once. That counts for one. So just so people know. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're, we're, you know, making some liquor stores very rich right now. Uh, well, I can, I can give people a drinking game that I made up once that uh, ended in utter disaster. But it was... Uh... It was a good idea. The whole idea was that uh, uh, a bunch of us were going to fuck. So we were going to get drunk and fuck. And so I put on uh, Max Hardcore. I don't know if you ever, if you know who he is. He was. I, I'm not familiar. He was real big into... He's real gross. He's like, <laughs> like late 50s, early 60s, and he only fucks chicks who are way like less than 110 pounds. Or at like 112, he, he has fat written on a scale. And he makes okay. them, like, talking little girl voices and stuff, and he's just abusive as shit to them. He's actually in jail. Okay, this got he's in, Well, he's in, <laughs> he's in prison now, not because he did rape anybody, but because uh, the movies made it out like he was fucking underage girls, even though clearly they were not underage. They were clearly right. just, like, coked-up whores from Phoenix. But uh, in any event, so he says, yeah, constantly. And it's so creepy. He just, yeah... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I had the idea that we would drink a shot every time he said yeah. Except Oh no. We I, I couldn't pour fast enough, so I was like, right, every third, every third. And then we had to each get a bottle because nobody could pour that fast. And then yeah. we were all passed out within like forty minutes. Jesus. Yeah, so no we didn't ever actually fuck. Although I yeah. did later on. I did later on fuck the girl that uh, that my buddy bought my buddy brought over because she uh, she had a body count over three hundred and I was like we absolutely have to fuck there's no way I'm gonna let you get away without without me uh, test driving that and she was a lawyer Bizarre. really uh huh that makes actually a ton of sense um <laughs> I'll, I'll, always used to using their mouths I mean that uh, is but, true. But anyway, it's like, uh, no, I, just a little side tangent here. Uh, I've been obsessed recently with, like, those ultra cringy porn openings. You okay. know, like the like the very bad acted, like, they're trying for some storyline, and then it's like, I'll teach you a lesson, and then <laughs> they go into fucking. It's super weird. You need to check out Lemon Stealing Whores at okay. one point. And it's literally these two people... That is sitting there going, just boasting about their lemon tree and how they're so thankful that they have a lemon tree. And that this neighborhood is, is sometimes dangerous because there's these lemon-stealing whores. And the meanwhile, all the meanwhile, there's this woman just like, I'm talking like Pink Panther tiptoeing into their backyard, going right next to the lemon tree, stuffing lemons down her one-piece bikini, Right? And then the guy turns and says to the woman, it's been about 10 seconds since we looked at our lemon tree. And then they take a look and he's like, what the fuck? And then it's like, I'll teach you a lesson. So I've been obsessed <laughs> with those stupid fucking. 
<laughs> it's so bad. I love it, though. Have you ever watched... <laughs> like, there's these out-of-context porn intro memes. I'll send you some, but... They're just right. super cringy. They're su- and you can tell the actors are, like, on the precipice of busting out laughing. Like, you right. can tell they can't hold their shit for much longer. They've just got to get it over with and get to the banging. <laughs> but anyway, now that this has digressed, we are going to leave the last little bit of this podcast, which, by the way, we're coming up on an hour. Oh, by the way, I, I just there are three news stories I need to talk about. Sure, sure. None of which have anything to do with lifting. One okay. is no, that's fine. That, the, that the Russians, and I'll send you the links to these stories so that you can, uh, uh, so that you can link them if you want. Yeah, um, I actually do my job for once. Yeah. <laughs> so the the Russians have invented a new and even more psychotic style of team MMA. Okay. So I don't know if you've ever seen any of their team MMA shit, but they'll, it'll be like four on four, just beating the tits off each other. And uh, so now they have that this makes one sense that's, for Russians. It's well, actually, it, that dates back to uh, in the like seventeen and eighteen hundreds. They used to have a sport called fist fight where they would uh, it would be town on town, and they were actually practicing military maneuvers <laughs> for yeah, like hundreds of people beating the shit out of each other, and that's where the whole rule about uh, not hitting somebody when they're on the ground yeah actually comes from. But oh, in okay. any event, uh, so they've taken the the team aspect of it to the next fucking level, and they're calling it parkour MMA. So they have, like, these different levels of platforms that are all inside the ring. And they're okay. fucking souping each other off five-foot platforms, like, just smashing their heads under the ground. It's bananas. It's it's absolutely out of control. Joe Rogan actually posted a video of him freaking out watching it. And he's just, like, you, you tip of the cap to the uh, Russians for just... They always raise the... Uh, they always up the ante on the level of insanity that they managed to bring to the world. No shit. There's this news article that I was reading this morning about this Russian guy who was in, there, in a hospital with a knife stuck in his back. And he goes out in minus 10 degrees Celsius weather because he wanted a smoke. Like, they're telling him, get back in the fucking bed that's close to your spinal cord. And he's like, no, I need a cigarette. <laughs> so, <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. So, some hardcore fucking people there. Yep. Um, All right, and then and then the next the, one? the next one yeah. is that uh, uh, the singer from Stained, Aaron Lewis, who is oh, no. now a country singer. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. Both both he and Hootie are country singers, and I guess fairly popular. Yeah, um, Aaron Lewis is. Yes. Yes. I don't know about uh, Hootie though. Now nah, Hootie Hootie's actually I think more Darius Rucker is his name. And I only know this because I used to run into him at the grocery store like every fucking day when I lived in South Carolina. Um, he would just always be at the Publix where I where I shopped. But uh, in any event, Stained. Uh, so the singer from Stained compared Fred Durst to the Dalai Lama. Okay. Which just doesn't make any sense at all. But I just I was I was looking for notable news stories to bring up, and I actually yeah. love. Limp Bizkit. Uh Oh, yeah, so do I, I. I don't know that I would ever characterize Fred Durst as particularly wise. Probably so, not. I no. mean, he's done a bunch of stupid shit. Of course, I know wisdom doesn't exactly uh, equate to actions, but... No, but I know. mean, he's from Jacksonville. You can't... I mean, what are you going to expect from a person from Jacksonville? Hey, man. The, hey, I mean, the, you and your fucking boner against the South. If, but Jacksonville is like next level shit. That's, That's true. taking all of the trash from the South and then putting them on the run from the cops. And so they all go to Florida for some reason. And they love Jacksonville. And it's just like, if you if you don't have a meth habit, you are probably going to be the valedictorian at your high school. Because everybody else has just got, their teeth are falling out of their head and shit. Side note, if you're from Jacksonville, please subscribe to the channel and give us a like. Yeah, yeah. It's not your fault that your city is just filled with trash people. We love you. So, and then I, the uh, go ahead. The last thing that I had was I saw a preview last night for um, 
a new Van Damme movie that's coming out where he's fighting MS-13. Okay. It's like in a... Uh, he's like kind of the grizzled old vet who like takes this kid under his wing and MS-13 starts fucking with him and so he just starts wiping out MS-13. It looks pretty bad. It looks pretty badass. Well, I like Van Damme movies anyway, so uh, I'll who probably doesn't be in like for Van a Damme. watch. Oh, and um, Batista's back in wrestling. Yeah, whatever whatever happened to his other little side gig? What Didn't acting? he go into acting? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, he, he was in Guardians of the Galaxy. But they um I guess they put Guardians of the Galaxy 3 on hold since they uh fired the director and now nobody wants to fucking be in the movie. I have some noteworthy news to talk about. All right, hit me. The Patriots owner, which by the way, oldest fuck rich guy with prostitutes. Nobody saw that coming. <laughs> oh, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, so the the owner of the Patriots, he he got pro he got caught with like Robert Kraft. Lot. Yeah, he got caught with a lot of prostitutes, a lot of them, a, a lot of counts of prostitution. A lot of counts of, so he has been charged with, oh, soliciting prostitutes. First degree solicitation. Yeah. Oh, I just saw over the weekend uh, that R. Kelly got hit with, like, I don't 300 counts of diddling two kids or something. How you did know, anybody not see that coming? Like, I distinctly, I was in middle school, and we used to yell, come here, bitch, let me pee on you. And it was because of R. Kelly. Like, everybody's known he's been fucking kids since I was in goddamn middle school. Like, 1990, I think, is when I started screaming that. You know... You would think that after the video surface of him literally peeing on a 14-year-old girl, people would say, okay, we need to take action. Y but you'd no. think. Somehow no. he managed to dodge all those bullets, but now I guess he got caught again? I, uh, you know what? Actually, I have a local story like that. So there's this guy. His name is Joshua Box, right? And he's he, like, okay, get ready. Are you ready for a very southern story? It's it's going okay. to bolster your opinion about Southern. Okay. Individuals. So this guy named Joshua Box, which, by the way, looks like he just escaped an acid attack, right? Like he has no nose. He's breathing out of a trachea or a tracheotomy tube. Um, like this guy is like you know pretty pretty bad off, right? Um, caught for child, uh, indecency, like, exposure or child diddling or whatever for the fourth time. Jesus. Four times. They let him go, right, after the first one, which, by the way, I think it was something about the first time is when he got injured because somebody just beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll send you pictures, but, um, this guy is horrific looking. So he got caught. Okay, then he went back in, right? A, a second time for the same thing. I mean, that's and, like a that's like somebody robbing a liquor store and then going back the next day to buy shit. And then he went back in for the same thing. And then he got out. He moved to like a town above me, right? Which it made news because he's pretty a pretty prolif prolific uh, child predator. And. He got caught again a month after release. Huh. <laughs> That's just... Ridiculous. Welcome to the South. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it's one of those things that, you know... I guess... I guess... That uh, we have different priorities on our table. You know? Uh, <laughs> you think... I, I don't know, man. I think that that would be close up to the top, like keeping that guy off the street, but I could be wrong. So, but don't take my word for it. Take take everybody else's that also thinks the same thing because it's fucking gross. <laughs> I just, you know, it's, there, I just don't understand, I don't understand that impulse at all to like, it, it's the same, for me, it's the same as fucking animals. Like, if they can't give you their consent, then I just don't see why you do it. But, um, I don't know. 
you have to understand the psychology, and this this is an aside, and I know this has kind of gone off the rails at this point, but we're already in so deep. Um, but it has to do with the psychology of, like, attraction and, you know, like, okay, there are these people called lunars, and they, they have sexual fetishes about balloons. Okay? What? So they have sexual fetishes of balloons, right? How? How? Well... When they were a kid, they brushed up against a balloon, and now their naughty parts feel tingly whenever they get near a balloon. That it's feeling that is simple. The, you know, the so the way I describe fucking in a hot tub is yeah. uh, is to just say, you ever rub two balloons together? That's exactly what it feels like. Oh no! And that's not a good feeling. It's like shower sex sometimes too. Shower just water's not a lubricant. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as water gets in there, it just it it sounds like you're like on the inside of my head. It sounds to me like I'm rubbing two balloons together because there's just it's that weird like sticky feeling, like it yeah. doesn't slide. I don't understand how that's sexual at all. Yeah, and by the people way, people that will say something, I was not defending the sexual attraction to child, I was trying to explain a way in which it could be potentially explained. I am not smart enough on that subject, nor am I vested enough in the argument of that whole child sexual thing to be commenting on it. So take my words with a grain of salt. Jesus Christ. Oh, and by the way, Eddie Hall is uh, hes on the keto diet, in fact. Oh, he is, yeah. No, he, he is? Yep, keto diet. Well, I mean, like, he is from a uh, country where, like, keto food is actually pretty cool. Like, blood sausage is amazing. I, so, I, we haven't done that yet, but I, we, we are intending to make the blood sausage, my buddy and I, sometime soon. I told you about that article, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, blood for the blood gods, so. Blood for the blood gods. Well, a lot to look forward on. Uh, a lot to look forward to, rather, because I can speak, it's fine. Um, a lot to look forward to on Plague of Strength, and I appreciate you for joining me. We went from talking about Berserker and Zen Monks, and we ended up on Fetish. So Yeah, but on one that I, for the life of me, I, I, that's, I can't wrap my head around it. Yeah. I feel so like i got to Google this now. You Do have they to. fuck balloons, or... Um... Come? Come? Uh, some, sometimes, yes. So, just like there's that rubber glove fetish. You ever, you ever seen that? No. Yeah, it's where, like, people will, like, the only, the only way that they can finish during something as intimate as a, uh, tug, uh, is they have to use a rubber glove. Interesting. That, again, yep. that, uh, how does that feel good? Before Jamie's brain explodes, we're going to end this one. I would like to thank everybody <laughs> who has supported us for an entire fucking year of HeyCast. That is insane. Yeah, that is. Um, that is. Look at us. Yeah, and we're up over 2,000. Uh, we're at 2,034 subscribers, and I want to thank evil, every single evil, whatever, every single one of you fuckers. Thank you for following along. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for everything. And here's to another year to come. Uh, this is Bryce Allen, your host of the HateCast, and I'm signing out. I've never had a sign out. Fuck that. We'll <laughs> see you in the next one. Later. Welcome back. You thought it was over, but no. An extra clip. Bonus clip. Here we go. So I, I, uh, I just happened to look it up and f discovered that Half Thor and I agree on the number one best protein source of all time. Human it flesh. is ribeye steak. Oh, shit. Bone-in ribeye. Um, Bone-in ribeye. I like that. Yep. Plus, it's tasty. It is, um, but you got the uh, cholesterol that is going to raise your testosterone levels. Uh, you're getting, It's delicious. And uh, it's one of those. It's a hard steak to fuck up, too. Because yeah. there's enough fat in it that you can overcook it if you have to, and you're still going to get away with it, so there you go. Bone are, you, ribeye. are you a fan of the gristle? I am. Okay, same here. Dude, I was I was the weirdest little kid. 
I used to, uh, I still do eat chicken bones, like when I'm eating fried chicken. Yeah. I'll eat all the, I'll eat all the bones and the tips of the wings, and, uh, I like, I just, I, I've, I'll eat the rib bones on a chicken breast. I, I just like bones, and, uh, I used to also, uh, well, like when we were eating steak as a kid, I'd be like, do you want your fat? And I'd eat it yeah. if they didn't. I, I was the same way, especially if it's yeah. like pan fried or if it's grilled. Ooh. Yep. Um, oh, can you yeah. get that little, you get that little char on the fat? Oh, oh God. Oh, my so God. Good. Now my mouth no, is watering. I'm fucking hungry. Also, uh, one last thing to add. Um, we will have a recipe for bone broth here on this channel here pretty soon, so look forward to that. I'm uh, we, trying... make, we make bone broth all the time in, in my house. Okay, well, I might have to pick your brain because uh, cool. people... I had mentioned cooking videos in one video, uh, and people seemed really responsive to, to having cooking videos on this channel, so we might do something like um, uh, Rage Recipes or something like that. I don't fucking know. Whatever. Something, hey. something edgy. Cool. <laughs> all right, guys. Now it's over. Conan, what is best in life? Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, to hear the lamentation of the women. That is good. That is good. Too many thoughts on my mind, I can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. I don't need no help, I don't need opinions, so don't waste my time then. I just been living online, my city don't show me no love and that's fine. Fuck local radio stations, I got more plays than all of these rappers combined. I'm going, I'm going again, I've been going in, I'm fed up with so many things. I gotta just let it all out, I'm talking about the shit they've been talking about. Telling me I should do this, telling me I should do that. Telling me, telling me things about rap. Talking the truth and that stab in my back, they will knock me off track. No, no, too many things have been building, been hard to deal with, I just been drinking. Remember my moves in the past, I'm wondering what was I thinking Lately I'm living in fear, wondering what if the end is so near All of this shit going on, the shootings are strong One shot to the head and I'm gone, I'm losing control but I can't let it go Cause I'm trying to get more and I've been in the moment I've been in the zone and I'm moving alone I don't pick up the phone when my family call I've been doing it wrong and I don't know what's happening Trying to get what I've just been imagining Getting close and I've just been examining All of the fake shit the game has been packaging My lord please is your crumb So grant me one request Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen, then the hell with you. I, I come from a town where most of the people are so close minded. They go into school and they work in a job, but they don't even like it. I won't be put in a box. Nobody telling me what I should rock. Nobody telling me what I should drop. Cause I do what I want and just know I don't stop. Recording till four in the morning, they snoring. I'm pouring my soul into every story. I'm writing, producing, I mix it, I master, I'm building my craft and I'm not looking back. I've been going doing things I wanna do when I want to. Everybody wanna get away, but they not do. Everybody wanna copy you, but they not you. Everybody wanna be cool, but they not new. Whoa, look how I go. Gonna be a dentist, I still got the flow. Never gonna lose, cause I'm still doing both. Never gonna lose, cause I've been on the road. Come to your state. And I'm killing the show Know that I'm young and I still gotta grow Know that I'm working the most No, I'm never gonna choke And I'm looking back down on the people below I've been keeping real I've been doing what I feel I've been out here trying to kill Every beat I know I will Every